The last time on Building Resilience, we were wrapping the house with Azex three-quarter inch PVC sheets with Paint Pro technology. Then we stepped back to admire the clean, modern lines of the new design. In the process, we dug in a little deep on the installation detailing because there's a lot more to it than screwing panels to the wall. The process for installing the, the Tamlin trims and the Paint Pro panels is very much, um, you start at the bottom and you start at a corner and you move across in one direction. The uh, process we used was to, to really attack one side of the house at a time. So we did you know, the south elevation, then we did the east elevation, then we did the north, and then we came around and did the west. So we were very much, um, very intentional about how that lays up. This week, we're gonna build a deck out back install some TimberTech Azek PVC deck boards, and then explore how the design elements work with the rest of the house. In order to not mess with the tree roots, Michael designed a freestanding deck that doesn't need below frost footing protection because it's not attached to the house. The reason that the deck isn't attached to the house um, isn't because the deck ledger is complicated in this wall system. Um, you know, as we've talked about in the past, and we've done it before, deck ledgers in Zip R12 are, are actually better because they're hidden, they're tucked way back, um, and they're completely waterproof before you start to attach any framing members. So it's an elegant detail. Um, but in this instance, if I attach the deck to the house, I'd be required to put frost depth footings in for the deck. And the deck was really pushing into space that we didn't want to disturb roots. And so I thought, well, let's make it a floating deck. Uh, and so instead of frost depth footings, the whole deck is, you know, like a sidewalk, it's floating. And, you know, it, it, there's the potential for it to, to move for sure. But again, what's our soil type sand? Uh, what's the likelihood yeah. of you know, moisture accumulation in the sand that such that it would shove the throw, start throwing the deck around low. Um, so I feel pretty good about that. But if it does move, it is there's about a half an inch gap um, in the decking from the house, so it's got space to move. And then the each of the deck joists is cantilevered over. I think it's roughly six inches off the back of yeah. those beams. The boys were the boys got to participate in the construction of, of the deck, you know, close to the ground. I felt pretty good about involving them. They were very excited to do it. Um, so installing hangers and uh, hurricane clips and all that stuff, they both got a lot of a lot of experience in that. Rigo got to help me move the PVC deck boards onto the deck, and he got a lot of experience putting in uh, Cortex screws. <laughs> and he got a lot of practice learning how to center a drill and drive it straight down versus at an angle. While Rigo was screwing off the deck, Michael took a break to talk about the groovy screws they're using. All right, so we're installing ASIC PVC decking. I'm on the deck right now installing all these cool deck boards. See, there we go. But I want to talk about these really cool screws that we use. These are Cortex screws. And what the Cortex screw does is it not only keeps the PVC from mushrooming, and that was used to be a big thing with composites, you have this mushrooming thing, but they also drill a hole at the same time so we can put a little cap in the deck board. And the face of the cap, the top of that cap, has a graining on it that matches the deck material as well. So you can see actually there where Rigo's standing, right behind me, you can't see any of the plugs. It's the same material, same installation method. It's got the plugs in it. And that's the awesome thing is that, you know, once you get a foot or two away, the plugs pretty much vanish, which makes for just a super clean install. And it keeps the fasteners nice and protected as well. So no water is going to find its way into these things. Not that that would be an issue anyway. They ran the decking parallel to the house, beginning with a full width board at the inner jog of the addition, gapped three eighths of an inch apart and working out to the acutely angled outer rim. As is typical in deck building, the boards are run long and then cut in place to get a straight line.
The outer rim is finished with a 1 inch thick Azek Paint Pro outer band coated to match the orange band above the second floor windows. So, connecting spaces, right? I've got this band at the bottom down here and I've got this band at the top up there. So it's that asymmetrical relationship. Yeah. And speaking of connecting spaces, there was a very intentional choice of materials to create the flow from inside to outside. The way that we constructed the deck, um, well, we had, we had a couple of things we wanted to achieve, right? I wanted to achieve this inside to outside visual connection, right? That was one of my big challenges on the design side was how do I blur the lines between inside and outside? Sky Cove did it upstairs in, in, in the baby's room. The big multi-slide door starts to really blur that inside to outside bit, but I wanted to take it a step further and using the combination of the ASIC porch product in concert with the ASIC decking product allowed me to have the same texture, the same color, um, one product that references porch, which is kind of that in-between space, and then the other product decking, you know, gapped appropriately so it looks like deck. But when the door is open, you know, you get that kind of bridge across the two. When people come through the house, when they're in the sunroom area, their brains automatically switch to <clears throat> underneath here must be like crawl space or something or nothing. And they don't get that. In fact, the music room that I'm sitting in is what's underneath there. So that porch floor product really gets people's brains to register, I'm outside before you're even outside. The multi-door sliders and interior porch flooring bring people one step closer to the outside. The massive sliders open the space visually, while the flooring does it through continuity. Stepping onto the deck doesn't represent the end of the inside to outside gradient either. The organic shape of the deck and the extreme durability of the PVC materials allow the deck to blend into the earth physically. I wanted to preserve as much yard as possible while still providing an, an ample deck. Um, and I didn't like, you know, going straight off the house, just it, it felt like it was cutting too much into the space and I wanted to deflect that a little bit. So, you know, bringing this edge in a little bit and bringing this edge in a little bit and then running back to meet it back there, um, I felt like it fit the land. On the design side, there are things that we like to, that we try to achieve, you know, where we have materials, man-made materials, built environment, meeting natural environment and these intersections. And there are some materials that are, that are just so appropriate for that usage. And using a, like a PVC deck board that can take all of the weather, <laughs> that you don't have yeah. to stain, that you don't have to keep applying a chemical to, that's pretty awesome. And then to have those kind of fascia skirt board components make contact with the ground visually is quite beautiful. Yeah. But also, like you said, it's not going to peel, it's not going to rot. And it, it, you know, it keeps all the framing nice and protected as well. And protecting the framing is what it's all about. Well, that and keeping the occupants protected, healthy, and comfortable. That pretty much wraps up the premier building resilience project as far as construction sequence and design details go. Next week, we're gonna recap the whole process by running through the checklist of resilient design principles and see how it all came together and whether what we got stacks up to what we set out to do. In the meantime, stay tuned and stay resilient.